now we will talk about loss of biodiversity that means why the organism get extinct why the animals die why the plants are no more that means i am not saying about all the plants but why the plants and the animals they get extinct they are no more uh, why few species get extinct so we will be discussing about loss of biodiversity just now we have read this in this in detail that what is the meaning of biodiversity biodiversity is getting that means the it, it is becoming lesser and lesser why so just now we will be discussing now what are the reasons of uh, these uh, no uh, reasons behind the uh, reducing or the uh, what are the reasons for the animals uh, getting extinct so there are various reasons so first is deforestation now when we say deforestation that means the what is the meaning of deforestation first of all deforestation means cutting off the trees to cut off the plants to cut off the plants now well uh, by cutting the trees how does the biodiversity get affected because by cutting the plants we are destroying the habitat we are destroying the habitat we are destroying the we are destroying the habitat now what is the meaning of habitat first of all habitat means where the organism lives the surrounding of the organism when we talk about the fish what is the habitat of the fish the water the what the water is the habitat of the fish what is the habitat of the camel desert area desert is the habitat of the camel what is the habitat for the uh, polar bear snow so where the organism lives the place where the organism lives is the habitat of that particular organism so what we are doing we all know that plants the trees give place uh, for you know they are shelter for so many animals and they also provide food to the animals directly or indirectly the herbivores or the carnivores each and every animal depends upon the plants so when the plants when the trees will be cut off how the animals will be able to survive there are various other effects also of deforestation that how this cutting of forest is affecting the animals negatively that we will be discussing in the uh, next part first of all here we will be discussing the different reasons why the animals and plants are getting extinct and the second point is pollution now what is the meaning of pollution any unwanted uh, thing when when get added in the natural substance when we talk about air when the unwanted things that means when the poisonous air get mixed up in the air that is air pollution when uh, certain harmful chemicals get mixed up in the water that is that means when the natural uh, substance doesn't remains natural some impurities get uh, you know get uh, they are added in the uh, natural things and thus we say that particular thing gets polluted or is polluted so we talk about any kind of pollution children you talk about water pollution you talk about soil pollution any kind of pollution water pollution you talk about soil pollution you talk about air pollution these all kinds of pollution are affecting the lives of the organism 
these all three pollutions are affecting the animals negatively now how they are affecting negatively actually all these pollutions are there in uh, you know in the chapters in the for that in the for some one of the units you know maybe it will be in essay 1 or essay 2 so in detail we, we will be reading in those chapters but just to explain um, a bit about this uh, i'll say that i'll just uh, give you certain points that how water pollution is responsible for killing the animals see when the uh dirty water when the uh water which is full of chemicals or when the hot water is released from the factories and industries and it get directly mixed in the water bodies then what happens see when the hot water get mixed when the hot water get mixed see i always tell this point that i never write the whole complete sentences i write the gist or the keywords so please uh, uh, make your own sentences now when hot water from the factories and industries when hot water from factories or industries get mixed up in the water body so what will happen children when the water will be hot the amount of oxygen in that will be reduced we all know see generally in water lot of uh, actually oxygen is dissolved and this oxygen is uh, obviously less than the amount of oxygen which is present in the atmosphere in atmosphere lot of oxygen is present but in water little lesser amount is dissolved isn't it that means the oxygen which is dissolved in the uh, water is available for the animals aquatic animals but when the water become hot this oxygen comes out isn't it that that means the hot water contains no oxygen or very less oxygen so when the water is hot then o2 will get reduced o2 get reduced so it kills the animals animals get killed because sufficient amount of oxygen is not there animals get killed now when the farmers use pesticides and the uh, you know the fertilizers and the all such kind of chemicals for the crops then what happen children now when uh, th this all is absorbed by the plants but there are certain su su such such uh, little amount left which is unused by the plants and when it rains along with the rain it get washed away and slowly comes and get mixed up with the water bodies now when such kind of water get mixed up with the water bodies then what will happen children this kind of water will give uh, rise to you know uh, it will be a good uh condition for the growth of algae so water from farms water from farms will be rich in nitrogen phosphorus uh, potash and all these chemicals uh, nutritious uh, uh, minerals i mean to say and it will give rise to alga now when the water bodies uh will get water which is rich in uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and potash then what will happen lot of alga will be growing on the surface of the water now when this alga will be growing it will be using at night time specially oxygen will be used and so again oxygen will be reduced one more thing when these alga dies when this alga dies then bacteria alga dies and then bacteria decompose them bacteria decompose and in this also the bacteria uses lot of oxygen and again the oxygen get reduced and that is the reason that because of this lot many organ other uh, aquatic animals die aquatic animals die 
why aquatic animals die because when the hot water from the when the from the industries and factories are uh, no is released directly in the water bodies due to hot water the oxygen will get reduced and the animals will not get sufficient amount of oxygen to breathe when the water from the farms get mixed in the water bodies such kind of water will be rich in the minerals and will give rise to the growth of alga which is known as eutrophication this process alga bloom is also known as eutrophication due to eutrophication also the animals cannot get proper amount of oxygen and when the alga dies again the bacteria decomposes the alga in this also lot of oxygen is required you know required will be used by bacteria so in improper or in some or when the sufficient amount of oxygen is not available the animals die even you can add oil spill so you talk about any kind of pollution this the, the any kind of pollution will be harmful for the lives of the organism now now when we talk about the soil pollution again when the farmers use the pesticides and the insecticides are used and when the fertilizers are used when the pollutants are burned when the plastic burn is burned so you know when the uh, the air will uh, the pollution the gases will be emitted and it will get mixed up in the air so it will cause air pollution and this air pollution will be harmful for the animals too and when the pollutants are you know dumped in the soil when the fertilizers and all these chemicals are dumped in the soil then the fertility of the soil get reduced that is a different thing but the uh, the organism which lives in the soil will be in great loss so this is how the pollution is responsible for killing different kind of uh, animals now we will move to the uh, third point and third point is hunting so we know that in hunting the animals uh, you know the kings and the not only the kings the britishers when they ruled our country they used to kill now uh, the animals just for the fun just for the entertainment for the fun so killing of animals just for fun entertainment and you no know, fun and and sometimes many a times for the food also no it reduces the number of the organism and gradually the organism vanishes the organism become extinct and remains no uh, like uh, you know we will define extinct also the word extinct also just uh, first of all i will complete this hunting so uh, before also i have discussed about the dodo and the mountain quail these are the extinct species now we have discussed that dodo is a, a dodo was a bird and was eaten in the 17th century was used as a food was eaten was killed just for the sake of the food and that was the reason that the number started decreasing and now this dodo is extinct species so why do why this these animals get extinct even just because they are killed for no reason for the sake of the food so uh, it's not like that that i'm saying that the uh, animals uh, should not be eaten the uh, but Uh, you know the hunting is also uh, hunting also requires a uh, you know a, a line a limit should be there anything beyond limit is unbearable so due to old hunting also the animals become extinct not only just for the sake of uh, um, food or fun the animals are killed animals are also killed for the because of human greed greed so human greed
now what is human greed that means to earn more money greed can be of any kind but here i'm talking about money we all know that many human part has got lot of importance and is sold on very high price in international market so uh, we all know that the skin of the animals even the eyes even the you know the different bones which is used for the medicine purpose so various parts of the animals have their different different importance so the human greed that means the when the man needs more money when the when they know that by killing the animals i'll be getting more and more money in the international market so better just go and kill the animal what does it takes but you know killing animals like this uh, will just not only uh, uh, you know affect the present but also the future because i have just discussed before also just when even the one small creature get vanish get extinct from the surface of the uh, uh, earth it affects the whole of the uh, earth it affects the, uh, the it affects the uh, food chain the food web and the balance is also disturbed it affects the total or all types of or the, uh, the ecosystems so human greed is also responsible for the loss in biodiversity so i was defining the word extinct so now what is the meaning of extinct so extinct means when the species is uh, no more when the animals belonging to particular species get vanished they are no more found on the surface of the earth so then we say we call that species as the extinct species so when the particular species get vanished and is not found on the surface of the earth then we say or we call that particular species is extinct now the fifth point now we'll be talking about now the first one we have discussed deforestation which is responsible for the loss uh, in the lives of the animals habitat hunting human greed and now we will be talking about the construction or one word we can say increase in population when the number of the people on the surface of the earth will increase definitely they will need more area to live when they need more area to live that means they will build their houses for building housing houses they are going to cut the trees they will be using more natural resources so when the natural resources are used more than the limit then obviously it is going to be uh, you know give a negative impact on the nature and due to that also the uh, animals die so population increases and you know uh, the many land is used for the construction of more uh, dams then maybe the school buildings or buildings i will write over here buildings railways and the roadways or the roads and uh, even the 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 places is used for the mines mining and again all these human activity is uh, you know deteriorating the 
species taking the lives of the animals now the sixth one is overgrazing you know goats and all these cattle they pull the a uh, lot of plants and they eat very selected part from that just harming the nature so overgrazing from the forest is again affecting lot of lives lot of organism which depend upon th that particular leaves uh, also uh, get uh, you know they do not get that particular part and even when the when the little small very small tiny organism which lives in the soil even those get affected so overgrazing is also one of the part which affects the lives of the organism now you know many farm many uh, grasslands are converted into farms many grasslands are converted into farms because all these points are actually connected only when i say that the population is increasing they need more place to live they will build more houses they will uh, use natural resources more and more and along with that what they will do they will use the uh, they will need more food and for more food they need to grow crops for growing crops they need to clear up the land and they will grow crops so the grasslands which are responsible for the life of lot of organism the grasslands which are responsible for the you know many small organisms existence uh, it get vanished because the grasslands are converted into the farms and just for the need of the humans the need the necessity of the animals uh, is overlooked and thus it is also responsible for the uh, loss in biodiversity so this all points are there i have to discuss more points but before that i need to clean up the dust the board so just now till now what we have discussed we are discussing the loss of biodiversity we are discussing the reasons of the loss why the animals are getting extinct why the plants are getting extinct so deforestation the plants are cut the uh, animals do not have the place to live then even many plants are used you know for the medicine purposes the herbs are used and they are uh, collected plugged in uh, ample amount and even it comes that is a reason sarpagandha and such kind of uh, uh, plants are in a uh, threat now they are not available in many of the places so pollution we have discussed that all kinds of pollutions affects the life negatively as i gave the example of lichens also that lichens are very very sensitive to the pollution you know the when they suppose this is a tree and this part is facing the road so here the like if the pollution is more here the lichens will be uh, not uh, seen the lichens will grow on the back side of the plant where the dust the carbon particles will reach in lesser amount so lichens are such a minute uh, plant are also uh, you know also get affected by the pollution so each and every species get affected by the pollution either we talk about water pollution or soil or air pollution then just because of the hunting unnecessarily hunting or maybe for the food when the hunt when the animal is a hunted uh, uh you know more than the uh, rate of reproduction then obviously it will be a uh, deteriorating point that means it is going to uh, affect the species negatively then human greed just for the sake of the money for selling certain body parts of the animals the just to earn money the uh, animals are killed then uh 
even you know many like we will talk in wildlife uh, conservation that animals are killed for so many reasons there we will be discussing this point in detail so then i told the uh, definition of extinct that means the animals or the plants which is not found on the surface of the earth now that is known as extinct now when the population increases population or the people need a lot of things to be alive uh, and for the construction of dam or the roads or the railways bridges all this the uh, mining it affects the lives of the animals and the plants overgrazing i explained this and grasslands are converted in the farms here we have discussed the seven point now i'll be discussing the eight point please know this now we will talk about the eight and the last point and that is the destruction of migratory routes so what is migratory routes eight point destruction of migratory routes now to understand what is the meaning of migratory routes it is very very important to understand or to know what is the meaning of migration so here i will write the meaning of migration now we all know that for the survival every organism needs certain favorable conditions now that favorable condition if it is uh, if particular for organism if the favorable condition is not available then what organism will do see either to change the conditions or to change the place so it is not in our hands or not even in the hands of animals to change the climate to change the nature to change the conditions so one thing they can do what they can do they can change their place that is all about migration so what is migration you know the mass movement it is very very important to use this word mass that means a huge number so the mass movement of the birds and animals in search of food water or shelter and to return back is migration i'll write and then explain the mass movement of birds and animals in search of food shelter water or good climate and then return back and this are right in bracket and to return back that means they go the animals especially you know the birds are very famous to cover very long distances so the birds move uh, the animals move from one place to another in mass the mass movement it is this word is very very important mass that means you know it is not like that that only one bird is moving or one uh, particular animal is moving no the whole group moves and the that is the reason i have written the word mass so the mass movement of the birds and animals in search of either they may be needing food food uh, if the food is not available the water or even the shelter or even the climate so in need of any one or all the animals few animals and the birds especially they move they travel the you know the long distance 
and again they come back when the favorable conditions arises back in the uh, part where they were living this is known as migration so uh, you know destruction of migratory routes that means the way uh, which the birds follow or uh, they take the way the route that is destroyed maybe due to the pollution or maybe the one or the other reason and when the path is not favorable then what will happen the birds and the animals they do not reach to the proper destination they die or then when they understand they don't only move and they get vanish at their own place only so it is very very important to develop the migratory routes properly you know when we talk about the migration one uh, name comes in my name is arctic tern you know this is actually a sea bird and it travels just imagine uh, it travels a uh, very long distance and from north pole reaches to the south pole so travels such a long distance and in traveling such a long distance if the path is not proper if the migratory route is not proper and so definitely they are not going to move and even if we talk about the second example the siberian cranes you know these cranes they come to india they come in india come india or come to india in winters so even these uh, this bird tra uh, travels a very long distance so migration is one of the way to protect uh, protection you know to protect themselves even you know the estivation and uh, hibernation this is not in your syllabus now but just uh, discussing as this term came migration estivation is what the summer sleep see the main intention is to prevent uh from the adverse condition and to come again in the favorable condition so some animals they move they uh, move from one place to an another even the fishes migrate you know and uh, if it is not possible then estivation is what summer sleep when the animals are not able to uh, tolerate the uh, heat they go uh, under the earth and they sleep a uh, sleep for long uh, man uh, very long duration and again they come on the surface of the earth when the favorable conditions come that is estivation and hibernation is winter sleep that means when the uh, when uh, the climate is uh, very cold it's very harsh winters are very harsh the animals they sleep and again they come back they uh, come out from their sleep when the favorable conditions come these two are also what just a ways to survive just two ways uh, two different ways to uh, be alive because they know they won't be able to survive in harsh condition so migration is also what migration is also a kind of a measure to protect uh, no the, the animals protect themselves by migrating from one place to another so this was the last point and this was these all are the reasons why the biodiversity is, is uh, getting uh, reduced why the animals and plants are reducing so all these are the points why the um, this, uh, like you know now has to work upon all this and see what can be done and how the conservation of biodiversity can be done so we'll discuss that also now the conservation of biodiversity conservation of biodiversity see first of all we read uh, about the biodiversity what is the meaning of biodiversity 
then what are the what is the what are the importance of biodiversity then we read how and why the biodiversity is getting reduced that means a loss of biodiversity now conservation means what to prevent to protect to save to how can we save biodiversity we can save biodiversity just by doing two things first is conservation of forest conservation of forest and second thing is conservation of wildlife conservation of forest and conservation of wildlife so conservation of biodiversity can be done just if we save the forest and if we save the wildlife now how can we save the forest and how can we save the wildlife now we will be discussing these two points so before we discuss conservation of forest we should know the importance of the forest importance of the forest so what is the importance of the forest why do we need to conserve the forest why we need forest we need forest first of all for the sake of our own existence isn't it why i am writing this point first because humans are very greedy we think first of all about ourselves and then about anything else so how forest is helpful for us for we get many things from the forest we get medicines yes many herbs are used as medicines many animals are uh, different parts of the animals are used as medicines so animals providers and the forest pro see when i say i talk about forest i'm talking about both the animals and plants because forest has both the animals as well as the plants so forest provides us medicines it gives us food it gives us lot of useful things like maybe leather maybe silk maybe you talk about different kind of spices and uh, you know lot many things we get from the forest so to so the forest are known as the important natural resources the forest are known as the important natural resources now why this forest are known as important natural resources it gives us oxygen isn't it it gives us oxygen then it also keep a balance between the oxygen and the carbon dioxide then the transpiration by the rate of transpiration the humidity is also maintained the humidity or the humidity is maintained now even the water cycle depends upon the forest and uh, many organism we all know the forest plays a important role as the habitat so these all are the points why do we need to take care of the forest it is habitat for many organism it is it plays a very important role in the uh, continuation of water cycle in the continuation of oxygen and carbon dioxide cycle uh, due to the transpiration the water vapor remains in the atmosphere then it provides us with lot of products you know we get many products uh, from the forest if you talk about the leather or the wood or the medicine and wood also you know different kinds of uh, wood uh, we get from the uh, forest and these all plays a very important 
role not only this it prevents soil erosion it prevents soil erosion and soil erosion we will be discussing in detail and not only this it maintains the water table also or ground level maintains water table in the ground i will add so that you will understand because the plants absorbs the water and plants keeps the soil firmly uh, intact you know if the plants and will not be there on the surface the soil will be washed away by the water by the rain water and there will be no fertile soil left and definitely that part will become desert which is known as desertification we'll study that also in detail so all these reasons are there why do we need to take good care of forest why do we need to conserve forest because these very you see these things are very small that it provides us wood and silk and leather and uh, 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 you know the medicines but the main part is water which is very very important for us it maintains the water cycle it maintains the oxygen carbon dioxide also which is also very important for us if we do not have leather and silk we can survive but if we do not have oxygen we won't be able to survive now so habitat is also very very important point so all these points make the uh, you know uh, uh, ensures the importance of forest and that is the reason why we need to take care of the why we need to conserve the forest so now we will talk about how to conserve the forest we have just read why do we need to conserve forest isn't it if the question comes why do we need to for, uh, conserve forest because forests are very useful for us why all these points are there now the point is that if we want to conserve the forest if the forests are so important for us then how to conserve and what are the different ways to conserve the forest so we'll discuss that now please note all these points